the Jack Benny program, transcribed and presented by Lucky Strike. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. For Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, richer tasting fine tobacco. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike. Lucky Strike. Friends, this is Don Wilson to tell you that Lucky's win again. That's right. Lucky's win again in a national smoking survey among college students. In 1952, a survey was made in leading colleges throughout the country, which showed that smokers in those colleges preferred Lucky's to any other cigarette. In 1953, another nationwide survey was made, a representative survey of all students in regular colleges from coast to coast. Based on thousands of actual student interviews, this survey shows that Lucky's lead again, lead over all other brands, regular or king size, and by a wide margin. The number one reason, Lucky's better taste. Yes, Lucky's do taste better. First, because they're made of light, naturally mild, good-tasting tobacco. L.S. M.F.T., Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And then, Lucky's are made better. Made round and firm and fully packed to draw freely, smoke evenly. Actually made to taste better. After all, smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste. And the fact of the matter is, Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. So be happy, go lucky. Get better taste with a carton of Lucky's. Be happy, go lucky, get better taste today. Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and yours truly, Keith Hopwell. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, in presenting the star of our show, it gives me great pleasure to bring you a man who... Just a minute, just a minute, Don. Hold it a minute. What? Don, today, instead of you introducing me, I'm going to introduce you. Me? Yes, Don. Ladies and gentlemen, today not only marks the anniversary of Don Wilson's 30th year in radio, but it also commemorates his 20th year with me. So, Don, take a bow. <laughs> oh, Jack, this is so touchy. Don, this day is yours. Today, we will all pay homage to you. When I say we, I mean the entire cast. Your slightest wish will be our command. Whatever you... Don. Don, you're crying. Well, uh, gee, I can't help it, Jack. See, the way those tears are running between your chins, it looks like you're irrigating something. <laughs> Please, stop sniffling. Well, uh, I'm all right now, Jack. I just couldn't help getting emotional when I realized that you've been with me for 20 years. No. No, no, Don. You've been with me. With me. To think that I came on this show when it was down, and because of... Down? The... And because of my personality and showmanship, I raised it to the pinnacle of success. Don, wait a minute. It wasn't minute. easy, and there were many setbacks, but every time the show was down, I brought it up again. Now, wait a minute, Don. My show was never down. So don't make things up. Well, now let's not argue, Jack. <laughs> really, let's don't argue because, well, and besides, I want to thank you for making this not only a memorable, but a profitable occasion. Profitable? What did Jack do for you, Don? Go ahead, Donzie. Tell Bob Crosby. Tell well, him. Bob, not only did I get $500 cash, but I also got a brand new DeSoto convertible for my wife, a trip to New York for the two of us on the Super Chief, and a whole week at the Waldorf Astoria. Jack, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Oh, gosh, Jack gave you all of that? No, but it was his letter that got me on Strike It Rich. <laughs> You're darn right. Well, Jack, I guess it won't seem like much now, but, well, since today is Don's 20th anniversary with you, the boys in the band got something for him, and... 
Here it is, Don. Oh, gee, thanks, Bob. What is it, Don? What is it? Well, now, wait, Jack, I unwrap it. Okay. Boys in the orchestra, huh? Yeah. Oh, oh, Jack, look at this. A diamond-studded cigarette lighter. Well, I'm glad that you like it, Don. My musicians went through a lot of trouble to get it for you. Well, Bob, that's a beautiful lighter your boys got for Don, but you'd think it would be wrapped a little better. Who did it? The owner of the store. The owner of the store? I could have wrapped it better than that. Not with your hands up over your head. <laughs> Bob, you mean the boys held up a jewelry store? Well, it was an accident, Jack. You see, when they walked into the store, Remley had his guitar under his coat. Uh -huh. The man thought it was a machine gun. He threw up his hands and said, take anything that you want. <laughs> well, that's still dishonest. Frankie should have opened his coat and showed the jeweler that it wasn't a gun. Oh, Frankie did better than that. He took out the guitar, started to play, and the guy said, Look, you got what you want. Stop torturing me. <laughs> well, that, that I can understand. Anyway, Bob, it was very nice of your boys to bring down that present. Well, he deserves it, Jack. After all, he took this program when it was down, and he started... It to... wasn't down! <laughs> Now, look, this show isn't five minutes old, and already I'm aggravated. That makes two of us. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello, Dennis. What's the matter with you? I got up on the wrong side of the bed this morning. So what? I fell out the window. <laughs> what? It's three stories. Boy, am I lucky I wasn't hurt. Oh, you landed on your head, huh? Was that it? Was that it, Dennis? No, on the mailman's head. Oh, fine. I guess he'll have to find himself a new job. A new job? Why? Yeah, now he's too short to reach the mailboxes. <laughs> I don't know, Dennis. Everybody else just goes along. Why do these stupid things keep happening to you? Oh, I guess it's because I got such a bad start in life. You know, I was an incubator baby. An incubator baby? How much did you weigh? 11 pounds. <laughs> Dennis, if you were that big, why did they keep you in an incubator? They were afraid to let my mother get her hands on me. <laughs> well, what did your father have to say? Nothing. He was hiding in there with me. This is all very interesting, but why don't you just sing now and save the rest of your biography for This Is Your Life? I'd rather you got me on Strike It Rich. All right. <laughs> I'll do it sometime. Just sing. Yes, sir. Tippy-tippy-tay, tippy-tippy-tay Like a gay tarandella When the stars make you drool Just like a bus of a Atamore When you dance down the street With a cloud at your feet You're in love When you walk in a dream But you know you're not dreaming Signore Scusa me, but you see back in old Napoli that Samore. When the stars make you drool just like a pasta fazool. A Samore. La 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 la. When you dance down the street with the cloud at your feet, you're in love. 
When you walk in a dream, but you know you're not dreaming, Signore. Signore. Scusa me, but you see back in old Napoli, that's amore. Scusa me, but you see back in old Napoli. Dennis A. singing That Samore with the Sportsman Quartet. And fellas, if you don't mind, I'm dedicating that song to Don. You see, this is a special occasion today. It's Don Wilson's 20th anniversary with me. And in honor of this, for our feature attraction tonight, we're going to do a special sketch based on the life... Oh, excuse me. I'll get it. Hello? Oh, Mr. Benny, this is Rochester. Rochester, I'm in the middle of my show. What do you want? Well, boss, do you remember that sweet little old lady who came by here last week? Little old lady? You know, the one that sold you that 50-cent raffle ticket on a Cocker Spaniel. Oh, yes. Now I remember. Well, she's back again. Hmm. What does she want this time? A hundred thousand dollars. She fell down your steps. Well, Rocha, she's suing me for $100,000? Cheer up, boss. I got some good news for you, too. What good news? You won the dog. <laughs> Rochester, who cares about the dog? I'm being sued for $100,000. Tell me, was the woman badly hurt? She claims she sprained her ankle. Sprained her ankle? Well, Ro that's no grounds for a suit like that. That's what I told the four men with her. Four men. Are they lawyers? I think so. Their names are Habeas Corpus, Delecti, and Giesler. <laughs> Giesler? She just sprained her ankle. I didn't blacken her eye. <laughs> now, look, Rochester, don't admit anything and get in touch with my insurance man. I'm covered for things like this. Okay. I'll see you later. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. Now what? We just got a copy of Parade Magazine and your picture is on the cover. Parade Magazine? Oh, yes, yes. And my picture's in color, isn't it? Uh-huh. How do my eyes look? Green. <laughs> Green? There's a spinach ad on the other side of the page. <laughs> a spinach ad? When you hold it up to the light, you look like you're peeking through a head. <laughs> All right, all right. I'll see you when I get home. Goodbye. Goodbye. Now, where was I? Oh, yes. As I started to say, tonight for our feature attraction, we're going to do the story of Don Wilson's life. Oh, please, Jack. Really, this is embarrassing. Now, don't you be so modest, Don. You deserve it. Yeah, I'll say. After all, you took the show and it was down and you put it, it right... It wasn't where... down! <laughs> And anyway, Dennis, that was 20 years ago, and you were only eight at the time. So how would you know? I had a radio in my incubator. <laughs> yeah, yeah, incubator. Now, come on, let's get on with it. Ladies and gentlemen, in honor of Don Wilson's 20th year on my program, we're going to present a play based on his life. The Don Wilson story, or life can be plentiful. <laughs> Curtain. Music. Our story opens in Denver, Colorado, many years ago. The stork has just delivered a precious bundle to the home of Mr. and Mrs. Donald C. Wilson, Sr. The mother happily whispers to the father. Darling, it's a boy. And the proud father says. Yes, aren't we lucky? The stork brought us a boy. And the stork says. Oh, my aching back. <laughs> Crib, looking at their newborn.
newborn son, the baby Sam. Three days later, he said. I want a roast beef sandwich. He was developing slowly. During that first week, three nurses quit because they just couldn't stand giving him his bottle. It was exasperating. The gravy would slip through, but the mashed potatoes were murdered. <laughs> but Donald was a good boy. Although his parents did have trouble getting him to sleep. Now, come on, baby. Come on. It's time for Betty Bar. <laughs> now, baby, stop that. <laughs> baby, stop. <laughs> baby, put me down. <laughs> Let me have him, dear. Okay. Now, Donald, close your little eyes, and Mommy will sing you to sleep. <laughs> Rock a bye, baby, in the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. If the bow breaks, the cradle will fall. Down will come Donald, Denver, and all. <laughs> Look, dear, he's asleep The years passed quickly and Don entered college And since his burning ambition was to become a radio announcer He majored in elocution How now, brown cow? How now, brown cow? And the cow and Don... Don always paid strict attention to what his professors told him. Oh, Donnie boy, you soon will leave these hallowed halls to face the world and all the future brings, future brings. Be not afraid, but go wherever duty calls. Your degree of LSMFT of MFT. But remember, Donnie boy, when you become an announcer and step up to that microphone, you gotta act, sense, situate the positive E, limb, when it's the negative and latch on to the affirmative. Don't mess with Mr. In Between. You gotta E, none. Clarity, use words with familiarity, and add on to your popularity. Don't mess with Mr. In Between. To illustrate our last remark, Jonah in the whale, Noah in the ark. What did they say? Just when everything looked so dark. I sure would like a lucky, yeah, man. It's lucky strike for me, light up. We know that you'll agree and puff. On an elephant with don't mess with Mr. In Between. Oh, no, don't mess with Mr. In Between. How now, brown cow? How now, brown cow? Better taste, you'll agree. L S M F T. Be happy, go lucky, strong. Don was a brilliant student, and he graduated from college, magna cum laude. <laughs> but the night that he was packing to leave the campus, he got an emergency call. His father had met with an accident. Don dropped everything and rushed to the hospital. You may go in and see him now, Mr. Wilson. Thank you, nurse. Oh, and uh, don't stay too long. It was quite an accident, and, well, your father's quite old now. Yes, I keep forgetting. You know, I haven't seen him for years. Dad. Dad. Howdy, Blubber. <laughs> Gosh, Dad, I, I just can't get.
get over it. What's that, son? Well, I, I know it's been a long time since I've seen you, but I'd hardly recognize you. How come you look so different? Because Bob Crosby can't play the part of an old man. <laughs> Don had made up his mind to be a radio announcer. Although Don didn't know it at the time, our paths were about to cross. I was doing a show then for the Universal Corset Company. So one day my sponsor called, so I went straight to his office. Gee, my sponsor really has a nice building here. Mm, he certainly believes in advertising. Look at that big neon sign. The Universal Corset Company. And look at their slogan. Gather unto you what is yours. <laughs> well, I better go in. Uh, I, I beg your pardon, sir, but would you tell Mr. Willoughby that Jack Benny's here to see him? Oh, Mr. Willoughby's expecting you, Mr. Benny. Go right through that door. Thank you. Yes? Mr. Willoughby, please. Oh, you're Mr. Benny. Mr. Willoughby's expecting you. Go right through that door. Thank you. <laughs> yes? Hmm. I'm here to see Mr. Willoughby. Oh, you're Jack Benny? Yes. Mr. Willoughby's expecting you. Go right through that door. <laughs> Thank you. Yes? Miss, I'm Jack Benny. Mr. Willoughby is expecting me. Who's Mr. Willoughby? <laughs> Look, Miss, isn't this the Universal Corset Company? Yes. Well, Mr. Willoughby is the president. Oh, you mean Poopsie. <laughs> Poopsie? Yes. Go right through that door. Oh, uh, well, all right. <laughs> Mr. Willoughby? Yes, surprise. <laughs> mm. Mr. Willoughby, I'm Jack Benny. Yeah, I know, I know. Come right in. Thank you. Now, Mr. Willoughby, what is it you wanted to see me about? Well, I hate to bother an artist of your stature with trifles, but a strange thing has happened since you've been broadcasting for us. What's that? We've been losing money. <laughs> We've been selling corsets for 15 years, and this is the first time the company is feeling the pinch. <laughs> Mr. Willoughby, just what is your complaint about my program? I can't stand the way you read our commercial. I want you to hire an announcer. So I started auditioning announcers. I tried voices. Voices, all kinds of voices. Deep ones, high ones, soft ones, loud ones. All right, bud, you're next. Read this. The Universal Corset Company presents Jack Benny. Now, the show opens, and you say... The Universal Corset Company presents... Jack Benny. No, 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 no. In the knee, in the knee, in the knee. Yeah, that's all, folks. I auditioned over 500 people, but I wasn't getting any place. It was then that I decided to try my luck at the famous Acme Elocution School. A with a U is A U A U. D with a U is B U D U. U D U D U A U A. G with a U is G U G U. E with a U is E U E U. A U E U G U D U. Very good, students. Very good. Now, what did you think of that, Mr. Benny? P with a U is P U P. <laughs> What? Oh, I'm sorry. You see, I'm a big comedian, and I couldn't resist 
the opportunity, but I really am looking for a radio announcer. Well, you've come to the right place. Now, let's see. In this class, I have little Harry Von Zell, Billy Goodwin, Jimmy Wallington, and that fat one over there is Donald Wilson. Donald Wilson. Gee, I like that name, and he looks like he might be just right for my program. Well, certainly, Mr. Benny. I'll call him over. Oh, Donald? Uh, Donald, this is Jack Benny. Uh, how do you do? How with an H and an O and a U and an O and a D is a how do you do? <laughs> now, Mr. Wilson, I'm considering you as an announcer for my program, and if you take the job, I hope everything turns out fine. Thank you. Uh, now, about your salary, Mr. Wilson. Oh, I'm so anxious to get into radio. I'll work for my three meals a day. Well, I wasn't planning to go that high. <laughs> Look, Mr. Wilson, money isn't everything, and you said yourself that you were anxious to get into radio. I know, but if I'm not going to make a halfway decent salary, why should I go on a show that's down? It's not down! How did I get in the script? It's in there because it happens to be true. It is not. It is true. It is not. Jack, Jack, you're ruining the whole thing. I don't care. My show was never down. It was true. You stay out of it. Don't pick on him, green eyes. What? That's Helen and Pope's That doesn't. Jack, Jack, let's get back to my story, the story of my life. I don't care about your life. I'm sick of it. I'm going home. Goodbye. Jack! G with an O, with an O, with a D, with a B, D, bye. Goodbye. <laughs> Go try and be nice to people. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, when a fellow needs a friend, he needs a helping hand. And the hands of the big brothers have helped thousands of growing boys to find the way to a useful life. Since the first Big Brother movement was formed in 1904, to the many thousands of men who daily volunteer to help, I say congratulations for a job well done. If you are interested in being a Big Brother to some needy boy, write Big Brothers of America, Philadelphia 3, Pennsylvania. Thank you. Jack will be back in just a minute, but first a word from America's foremost authority on etiquette, Miss Amy Vanderbilt. Some of my friends tell me that in my new book on etiquette, I was a little hard on smoking. Actually, I was hard on smokers, at least some smokers. I dislike thoughtless smokers. You know, the man next to you at the dinner table who holds his cigarette so that the smoke drifts into your eyes. I like considerate smokers. For instance, I like to know that my husband is considerate enough to carry my brand of cigarette. Lucky strike. In smoking, as in etiquette, it is, after all, all a matter of taste. I want a cigarette that tastes better to me than any other. That's Lucky Strike. Friends, Amy Vanderbilt is right. Smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste. And the fact of the matter is, Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. There are two good reasons. First, they're made of fine tobacco. The whole world knows, LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Then, Luckies are actually made better to taste better. Made round and firm and fully packed to draw freely and smoke evenly. It all adds up to real deep down smoking enjoyment for you. So take a tip from me and be happy. Go lucky. Next time, ask for a carton of Lucky Strike. Lucky tastes better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike. Lucky Strike. <laughs> Hello, Rochester. Hello, boss. <laughs> What's that? That's the Cocker Spaniel you won in the raffle. Oh, isn't he cute? You better like him a lot, boss. He may wind up costing you $150,000. Wait a minute. The woman that fell down was only suing me for $100,000. What's the $50,000 for? You're being sued again. The dog just bit somebody. <laughs> oh, no. Good night, folks. The Jack Benny program is written by Sam Perrin, Milt Josephsberg, George Balzer, John Tackerberry, Al Gordon, Al Goldman, and produced and transcribed by Hilliard Marks. The Jack Benny program is brought to you by Lucky Strike, product of the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. Stay tuned for Amos and Andy who follow on the CBS radio network. <laughs>